What is up party people? So I bought some insurance leads just to make this YouTube video for a live sales call. So I got an appointment coming up in three minutes. So I wanted to make a quick introduction to kind of pre-frame this video for you. I'm gonna have the closer framework from Alex Hormozzi kind of up in a Google sheet. That way you can kind of read along and follow where I'm at in the sale. But it's gonna give you a good example of how to transition into a telesales appointment or anything like that. This is actually a pre-booked insurance appointment. She filled out a request for coverage. So I'm going to see what I can do to help this girl out. And I hope this helps somebody kind of know what a sales call should at least sound like, or what kind of questions you should be asking, what kind of closes, hopefully I get some objections, whatever. But I hope this is valuable enough to you to help you go out and make some money in your own insurance sales. But without further ado, let us get right into this video and uh, help this lovely person get protected and make some money. Yeah, so I'll see you guys in the video. Hello, hello. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Is now still a good time to talk to you? Yes. Okay, perfect. So first off, how's your day? Um, pretty good. All right, and I'm just, as promised, I was just getting back to you for the appointment we had made the other day. So let's get this kicked off. Are you ready? Yeah. Awesome. So, what made you kind of call in or meet with me? Like, what's your goal with this coverage? Like, why did you sign up for this? I'm really just wanting to get more information about life insurance in general. Like, what it can do to help my family out. Okay, so I'm assuming you're not hopping on sales calls all day just to get information. So, is there a problem that you're trying to solve? I just don't want to leave my family with my debt. And okay, so how much debt are we talking? You get you got like a million dollars in credit card debt? Not a million dollars, but <laughs> okay, good. I can help you then. So, how much debt are we talking? I just um, I have a loan out for my car. And how much is that? Um, the loan was for about twenty four thousand. started last year so I probably owe 20. Okay and what were you wanting this coverage to do for you? Pay off the car and what else? Pay for a funeral. Okay and how much do you think a funeral cost? 10 to 15. 000. 10 to 15 thousand perfect you're knowledgeable. So 30 to 35 grand in coverage and were you wanting this coverage to do anything else for you? Leave a little bit of money behind for a special someone, your family. Um, yeah, probably just a little bit extra for my um, siblings. Okay, and how many siblings do you have? I'm the oldest of seven. Shee! Y'all can play that uh, Red Rover, Red Rover right over, can't ya? Sure. Do y'all have any like backyard sports teams? <laughs> no, not really, but a lot of living room fights. And a lot of Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. My mom's been married four times, so you can only imagine how many uh, family reunions and Thanksgivings I go to. I can only eat about three plates before I'm uh, in a food coma. But tell me about your family. What? What exactly are you trying to protect them from your debt for? Um, well, my mom's a single mom, so... Okay, and what's she do for work? She doesn't work. <laughs> she doesn't work? No. 
Okay, so I'm assuming she would have to get a job? She, yeah, she'd have to get a job because me and my sister both help her with whatever she needs for the younger siblings. Oh, so you're giving your mom money. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that supposed to be the other way around? Supposed to be. Supposed to be. Sounds like you're the mom. <laughs> Feels like it most is. Okay, and walk me through what would happen, God forbid, if you passed away yesterday, and now your six siblings and your mom is stuck with a car payment and a funeral. Is that something they can afford? No. Okay, so walk me through what's going to happen with them. My mom would have to work, and she'd have to find a babysitter for the baby. And how feasible is that for her? Not very. And how old is the baby? He is 11 months. 11 months, wow. Okay. And is he, is he working at all or anything? <laughs> mm. It'd be nice if he could. It'd be nice if he could, okay. Well, there's a couple options we can go over. I don't think you want to entertain the idea of selling a sibling, so we'll kind of leave that alone. But uh, what's going to happen to your family if you don't have this coverage and something happens today, like what do they have to do to make ends meet besides your mom getting a job and finding a babysitter, which you've already told me isn't feasible? What are your siblings going to have to do? What's life going to be like for your family without you around and out having this policy in place? It would be uh, like a complete 180 of what they're doing now. And what does a complete 180 look like? Can you paint that picture for me? Anything like that, but my sister would have to work more. My one of my brothers, he has a job too, but so he'd have to work more to try and help mom. And you're already giving her money along with your sister, correct? Yeah. So is she going to be the one mainly impacted by this? My sister, yeah. Okay, your sister or your mom? <laughs> Probably my sister. Okay, and so. Your sister's working, your brother's working, your mom's not working. What does life look like for your sister? Is she going to have to, you said she'd have to work more hours? Yeah. And what does she do? Um, she is a, she's a boss. She's um, a boss at a senior living home. Senior living home. Like assisted living. Okay. I actually, um, when I was in high school, I worked as a glass installer and I had to put glass in one of those like, uh, assisted living places and this this girl like picks up a metal chair and threw it through one of the glass pieces I just installed keep in mind it's like six foot wide by 12 foot tall so <laughs> she was just screaming they're after me they're after me but I I can only imagine what it's like working in that place does she come home with bruises or are they pretty nice to her I think they're pretty nice to her she did most of the time she doesn't deal with the residents directly she just she is um, the boss over all of the resident assistants. Okay, so how many hours would she have to work or pick up or maybe get a second job to make ends meet to pay for your debt? She'd probably have to work about an additional 20 hours a week, I'd say. Ooh. And what do you think that would do to her life? Well, she'd basically just be working to pay off my debt. And how long do you think it would take her to pay off that debt? Probably a few years. A few years? <laughs> to pay off like a 20 grand loan. Wow, and from the sounds of it, you don't have any existing life insurance? No. Okay, well you'd agree that getting something put in place is better than having nothing, correct? Yes. So if I found you something affordable that prevented all that stuff from happening, would you be opposed to pulling the trigger today and getting some coverage? No. Okay, perfect. So basically what you're telling me is that God forbid something happened to you today, your family, mainly your sister, would have a huge financial burden and that is what you are wanting to prevent from happening? 
Yes. And so if I help you do that, you won't be upset with me, correct? <laughs> no. Okay, no. perfect. Great. So I know where you are and where you're trying to go. What all have you tried so far? Like, have you tried meet with any, like, any other insurance agents or did you have any existing life insurance through work or other things in the past? Like, I can't help you where you're looking to go until I know where you have been and what you have tried. The only existing thing I have is um, a $5,000 life insurance thing through work. Okay. And do you know what will happen to that coverage if you leave that job or lose it? Well, it won't follow you. Have you been at that job your whole life or? No. And I'm assuming the job before you, before that one had life insurance as well? Um, I think so. Did it follow you over to your new job? No. So do you think this policy would follow you to your next? No. Correct. We're, I'm glad we're on the same page. And so what do you do for a living? I'm a bank teller. A bank teller? Do you want to wire me a couple mil? I always root for the bank robbers. I know it's counterintuitive and contrary to popular belief, but as long as you're not hurting women or kids, I don't really care what you're doing. Fair enough? Fair. Okay, awesome. So you're a bank teller, and what do you bring home every month after Uncle Sam comes in and takes his cut? Probably about 1600 1600 Okay, and how much do you have left over at the end of each month after you pay all the bills? Like, what does it cost you to survive, and how much do you have left? Three to four hundred. And if I found you something that was way below three to four hundred and affordable, you said you wouldn't be against pulling the trigger on it today and getting it put in place? No. Awesome. We're on the same page. So, how long have you been thinking about getting life insurance? Um, for a few months now. A few months. And what have you been thinking about it for a few months for? What exactly? I just, I started thinking about it whenever, well, I, I just turned 21, so I figured. Happy birthday. Better now than ever. <laughs> yeah, and for what purpose is it better now than ever? Because you never know. Because I'll. Because I. I never know if something's gonna happen to me or not, and I just want my family to be covered if something were to. Correct. It's never a matter of if, just a matter of when, right? Yeah. Okay. And after hearing that, it makes sense that you are meeting with me. And the good news is, this sounds like it would be a great fit for you. And given your past, you're like ninety-five percent of our other customers who have seen some very big impacts from this coverage. Would you like to hear about some of those? Yes. Okay. So. We had a guy come in when I first started doing life insurance. Um, he wanted a full payoff for a $400,000 house. And he was 80 years old. Keep that in mind. So for one, he's not going to get that. But I did get him a small mortgage protection policy. And all that really did was it bought him time. It bought his wife time to get the house in the market and get it sold. Because their house was actually worth $800,000. So there was their life insurance policy right there in the equity. Uh -huh. So can you see the value of that? She got to sell the house pretty much without having to worry about making the mortgage payments, getting it all listed on the market and trying to come up with his income. Cause I'm sure you know how bad, like a lot of senior citizens live, especially with your sister working with them when they get social security and they lose their significant other's income puts a big financial strain on them. Yeah. So that's kind of one of the stories we've had that uh, hits home to me, knowing that I got to save someone from being homeless. Yeah. Awesome. So here's pretty much how the coverage works. So with this coverage, it is never going to get more expensive, so you're locked in at the best price. The payment, like have you ever seen those policies on TV that are $19.99 for a million dollars? Do you think those would actually pay out a million dollars? Probably not. Probably you're correct. So you're not going to have to worry about that happening with this. And based on how young you are, 
from you telling me you're 21 years young, this is going to be pretty inexpensive or affordable for you. So that's great. So you're going to be locked in at the best price. And two, you'll have living benefits, meaning you don't have to die to use the policy. If something happens at work, you get sick, anything, the policy will pay out a lump sum or a monthly benefit to make sure that if you get something like cancer, you won't have to come out of pocket to pay for it. And three, you're going to get an agent for life, just meaning if something happens at 11 p.m. on a Saturday night, I want you to call me immediately. I don't want you waiting until Monday when everything opens back up. Call me and I'll be there for you to help you and your family no matter what time of day it is. But it's just my job to make sure that when God forbid a disaster happens, that the right amount of money is on that check when I deliver it to your family to make sure that your mom and sister and your siblings won't have any financial burdens to worry about when they're dealing with your funeral. They've already got enough emotional stress. Fair enough? Yeah. All right, so you ready to get to the nitty-gritty here how the pricing is? Yeah. Awesome. So let me see here. And go ahead and grab a piece of paper and a pen for me, and I'll get you to write some stuff down for me here in a second. Okay. All right. There's a couple different plans available. I'll just walk you through those. So we're going to be going through a company just because they have a cash back option. Some people are worried about wasting money with life insurance and I completely understand the skepticism and I want to make sure I'm offering you the best thing that money can buy for your family because you would you respect me if I just showed you the cheapest st stuff? Mm, I'd rather you give me all my options. Okay, perfect. So the first one is, a. Uh, you said you wanted to leave a little bit of extra money behind for your family? Yeah. Okay, so the first one is the 50000 that you were wanting, but that has a return of premium, just meaning in 30 years, if you don't die or don't use the money, they'll just give it all back to you, or you have the option to forfeit that money, and it doesn't get lost. It actually just buys you a whole life policy. That way you never have to worry about life insurance again. And it has an accidental death benefit rider attached to it, just meaning if you die from an accident, your family will get 100000 Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So that's pretty much how all the policies are. And then I'll walk you through the next one. So that one is $72 a month and 16 cents, if you want to write that down. Okay. The second one is just the 50000 There's no return of premium. It still has the double indemnity. So if you die from an accident, family gets 100 That one is... $44 a month. Okay. And the last one is just $35,000, enough to pay off the car and the funeral because over time, that debt is going to get smaller as you make payments on it, correct? Yeah. So over time, you'd still be leaving additional money behind without you spending additional money now on extra insurance that I don't really think that you need. Fair enough? Fair, yeah. Okay, so that's $32 a month. Which one would you like to proceed forward with? Okay, and what if he says no? I probably still get it. <laughs> okay, we'll just go ahead and pull the trigger then, okay? Okay. <laughs> like, does your boyfriend know that you have this problem that when you die, your family's going to be left in a kind of that up shit's creek without a paddle? We've talked about it. So he knows you have this problem? Yeah. Does he approve of you having this problem? So why would your boyfriend be against you solving a problem that he already doesn't approve of? That's a good point. <laughs> okay, so you want to go ahead and get this knocked out? That way we can take another thing off your to-do list? That way you don't have to worry about it? Yeah. Awesome. What's your full legal name? Okay. I made you all these promises today about what the policy was going to do for you. I just need you to make two promises to me, okay? Okay. First one, if you need to write it down, you can. If this ever gets unaffordable, six, seven years down the line, you'll call me and tell me. But we agree that this fits in your budget today? Yeah. Perfect. Promise number two. There are tens of thousands of insurance agents out there, but I am the best one for you and your family. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. 
perfect. So if another insurance agent calls you about this, just be polite to them. You ain't got to invite them to any basketballs or barbecue games. I'll already be at those. But just be nice. Take their quote. And what I want you to do is call me back immediately. And if it's something better, I'll be honest with you and tell you. Hell, I'll even help you fill out the paperwork for it. Okay. Fair enough? Fair, yeah. Okay, but if not, I'll get on a three-way call with you and that agent and explain to them why it's not the best way to move forward. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So was I pretty transparent with you about everything today? You feel, do you feel like I held you at gunpoint and made you get this or? No. Okay. Very informational. Okay, awesome. And do you feel like we got your problem taken care of today? Like, do you feel pretty confident about your purchase and happy with it? That all your that your problem is going to be solved and taken care of. Yeah. And how much weight does that take off your shoulders? It takes a lot of weight off mine and my sister's too. <laughs> yeah, and you could like if you died today and I came and delivered this check to your family and paid everything off. Do you think there would be any cons or bad parts to that at all? No. Okay, we're on the same page. So. Before we get off here, do you happen to know anybody else that might be in a similar position to yours that it would be okay for me to reach out and help them? Um, my sister. I don't think she has life insurance. And so the last thing you want to do is donate to a GoFundMe, right? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So would you mind just going ahead and putting us in a three-way text and letting her know that I'll be reaching out to her? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well... Do you have any questions for me for, before we hop off here? No. Okay, awesome. Well, I appreciate you showing up to the call today prepared and letting me help you out. Thank you. Hey, no problem. So it'll be about a week before this policy is all taken care of, finalized, and the insurance company gets back to me. I just say that because sometimes they're a little slow. Normally, they only take a couple days, but I'm going to go ahead and print out this application and mail it to you. That way you have a hard copy of it. And no, I didn't just take your money and send it off to some Nigerian prince over Western Union. Okay? okay. All righty. Perfect. Well, if there's anything else that I can possibly do for you, or you just want to call to talk about my Huskies, anything like that, you've got my personal cell phone number. So don't be a stranger and I won't as well. Okay. Okay. Thank All right. Well, you have a great day. I'll see you later. That's how you close some business, folks.